Welcome to Athens Politics Nerd, where we break down commission meetings to bring you the important local news. Dozens of protesters packed City Hall last Tuesday demanding justice for Linentown. They say their houses were stolen from them in the 60s by the University of Georgia. Will this wrong finally be made right? Will it even be recognized? Let's find out. You can keep up with local news, Georgia politics, and national policy by subscribing. Linentown was a black neighborhood in Athens that was right where those high-rise dorms stand today on Baxter Street. It was raised in the 60s during urban renewal, where so-called blighted or slum areas across the country were demolished to make way for new development. The people living there didn't have an option to say no. The city bought their homes by invoking a government right called eminent domain, and then they were destroyed. Governments are allowed to forcefully take people's property if it's in the public interest, and so long as they pay adequate compensation. Now, whether forcing people from their homes to put up student dorms is really in the public interest or not is perhaps debatable. What's more certain is that the amounts these black families were paid for their land was far from adequate. In some cases, it was shockingly low. The median amount given in exchange was $5,800, which would be about $47,000 in today's dollars. I'm not an expert on real estate, but I'm doubtful you can find a home in the downtown area for under $50,000 these days. So. 50 black families had their property stolen and were forcefully removed from their homes, which were then destroyed. But a few homes from Linentown managed to escape the destruction. One such home belongs to Geneva Johnson's family. This house right here is from Linentown on Peabody. This is not the house we was raised in. They wouldn't let dad and move our house that we was raised in because it was too big. They was going to tear it down anyway. And they said this, all the houses that was in Leonardtown, they said they were shacks and sh shambles. They were just, but they were not. Basically, they just kicked us out. And if we didn't move fast enough, we had to pay rent. They charged rent. So even with this small amount of money that was given, they wanted some of that back. They would push houses down of people that we knew. And then some houses were burned, and we saw, you know, some houses were burned down. So it was traumatizing. Former residents of Linentown, like Geneva and Hattie, say they want two things, recognition and redress. With the help of Commissioner Mariah Parker and the Linentown Project, these former residents have crafted a resolution which they want the mayor and commission to adopt. It calls, first and foremost, for recognition of the wrong that was done to them. They want an apology. This is something that UGA in particular has yet to give them. In a response to former residents' push for recognition, UGA sent a private statement to commissioners arguing against the resolution. UGA claims that the purchases were voluntary, that the homeowners were well compensated, that race had nothing to do with it, and that the urban renewal project was actually in the public interest. Okay, so that's not any kind of apology. Beyond recognition, the Linentown resolution calls for financial compensation to the victims, an on-site memorial, and historic designation for the remaining Linentown structures. And it seems like commissioners are on board with it. Commissioner Parker helped draft the resolution, like I said, and several others have been strongly supportive. Another group of commissioners, including Russell Edwards and Jerry Neesmith, support at least parts of the resolution. Commissioner Edwards even attended a rally held by the group outside City Hall. When he got up to speak, he let the crowd know his feelings. He said he supported the resolution, but was concerned with parts of it and wanted to make some changes. And that was the wrong thing to say. He was booed off the stage with the crowd yelling, this is what white supremacy looks like. So what could have possibly caused the crowd to boo a supporter? First, Edwards wanted to make sure that the resolution's language about financial compensation was legal under state law. 
Second, there's a line in the resolution that reads, the city of Athens and the university system of Georgia perpetrated an act of institutionalized white supremacy and terrorism. While that may be true, the local government's relationship with UGA is a critical one. So I understand why some commissioners might prefer to compromise in this situation to get what's really important in the resolution passed. When we sit in their faces and talk about compromise and talk about how we're going to figure out something significant to do at some point, some way, somehow, that is white supremacy still. That is white supremacy still. I will continue to insist that the resolution, as written, will make it onto a future agenda that is voted and that is passed, that we follow through on every single step. I just hope we can get to the place where we are sitting around talking instead of sitting in a place where folk, some folk feel as though they're being threatened. Resolution. Uh, well, you know what? First of all, I wasn't talking directly to you, okay? I volunteered a month, a, a month ago after a, a long meeting where I almost cried with Hattie. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, you can laugh if you want. I'm not laughing. Oh my God. Yes, I am. Who the hell do you think you are to call oh, me a liar? I'm just asking call, call, Commissioner call, call Neesmith to continue okay. his comment. Something else is going on that keeps somebody from uh, actually supporting the resolutions because they have tides or... Um, what I heard was that um, Commissioner Edwards did support the resolution, but there was just maybe a few words in there, like the, the really strong very strong language that we didn't mean maybe it's, it's very true but that's what he did well you know, if we say if we have we have said all along that we are not tied to just words we just want the intent to be the same you can change the word but the intent of the resolution should be the same but if you ask a person say okay if you want this word changed we, and we change it would you support the resolutions and we don't get an answer yeah. I think that this is a process, you know, we're, we're working towards meaningful legislation and we might have some minor differences. I, I mean, I view them as minor, but I am committed to getting something passed and I'm here at the table. There has been a lot of miscommunication and when miscommunication happens, you have a lot of people who take sides not knowing what's in the middle. I support the current iteration if that's what is pursued. <laughs> but <laughs> I do hope though, and I, I, I do hope though that we, the residents, and I know the residents spoke uh, to this tonight, that the we, the residents, the mayor, the commission can sit down and work together so that we can optimize our ability to implement those end goals of redress. Because it is not enough to only recognize. It is not enough, as Commissioner Thornton put it, just to have a piece of paper. It's not enough. That's not why I signed up for this job. It's just the past pieces of paper with good words on it. That's an important part of it. But it's the action that those words lead to. That's why, that's why I did this. Um, and so I want to make sure that that is our end goal. That, I know from talking to the residents, that's the residents' end goal. That is my end goal as a commissioner. This resolution can pass. We have to talk to each other. That's our best chance. We need to communicate. Thanks for watching.